This is Secretly Awesome, sponsored by Hiscox Insurance. I'm Roxy T, an entrepreneur and furniture designer, literally raised in my family's furniture factory. Oh, hi! I find inspiration for my designs in everyday life and love including fun and unexpected elements. And that's what this show is all about. We find and celebrate small businesses, products, and experiences that are secretly awesome. I love the theme of today's episode. We're keeping it at home and featuring nothing but family-owned businesses. From old world Greek tradition with a modern twist to what might be the best fried chicken in America and the oldest candy shop on the Jersey Shore. This is Secretly Awesome. It's a style of ice cream that his grandmother invented back in the 1930s and quickly became the most famous ice cream in the Middle East. It stretches beyond belief. <laughs> it's super creamy, super stretchy, so yeah, I really love it. I love this ice cream because it's so flavorful. It's always been a family-run business. I saw my grandfather in it, I saw my dad, my uncle, everybody, the whole family was in it. My son wanted to do ice cream since day one. I've been trying to get my dad to open this location for about 20 years, so behind his back I went and bought these two machines and he saw them and he realized that he needed to start teaching me the recipe. It is not your typical ice cream. I don't know how to describe it. It's definitely heavenly. Hi, my name is Fadi Rukab. I'm the owner of Booza at 5922 Richmond Avenue in Houston, Texas. My name is Ricky Rukab and I am the father of the owner of Booza, Houston, Texas. Booza is a stretchy style ice cream my great-grandmother invented in the early 1930s, and we've been making it ever since. She used to make small batches of ice cream, and in the 1941, they opened their first location in Ramallah, Palestine, and it is still the same location with the most famous ice cream in the Middle East. In 1998, we came to the United States, and my son wanted to do ice cream since day one. I've been trying to get my dad to open this location for about 20 years, so behind his back, I went and bought these two machines, and he saw them, and he realized that he needed to start teaching me the recipe. We did locate most of the ingredients, and I think it was very easy for him to pick up the ingredients in the recipe and how to make it and how to make it better. It stretches beyond belief. <laughs> and the flavors are really great. It's super creamy, super stretchy. So yeah, I really love it. I come here as often as I can. It's just amazing. Our ice cream is based from whole milk, sugar, the stretchiness of the ice cream comes from guar gum, dextrose, arabic gum. We make everything in-house. Our ice cream has creamier, has higher resistance to melting. People have been intrigued about this stretchy style ice cream and seeing their faces when it stretches and stuff, it's exciting. I really like the texture and the elasticity of it. It's really, really good. It's really flavorful as well. It's not very artificial flavored. It feels real, you know? Since we opened, a lot of people come and when they take the first bite of ice cream, I don't want to exaggerate, they start crying and they remember that ice cream which they had 30 or 40 years ago and they never had a chance to go back home to try it. I love the stretchiness of it. I love the texture of it. But most of all, it brings back the memories. They make it the same way like in the Middle East. It means a lot. It means a great deal because I've been trying to get into this business and I'll, to be honest with you, at one point I didn't think I would be into this business because I'm getting too old and I didn't think my dad would ever teach me the recipe. So it's a really dream come true to do this. She founded her company out of her garage and $1,000 from a GoFundMe account. Eight months later, Whole Foods comes knocking on her door. Yes, Majestic Bliss Soaps was founded in this garage among the bicycles, among the summer stuff, you name it, it was here where it all happened. 
then I started dabbling in holistic healing, which is known as energy healing. And a lot of people that came to me and after their session, they're like, oh my God, I love how I feel. How can I maintain this bliss? Ah. Well, what can I create that is long lasting and is used by the everyday person? Ta-ta, soap. We have the, the background needed to take a business to the next level. So it was just me supporting her, helping. We're a team. Well, the cool thing is when you study energy, what I learned from pranic healing is that you could infuse everything, including the ingredients that I use for the soap, this restorative energy. Once it's in our mold, it goes into our rack. It sleeps there for over 24 hours, so it's a process of curing. Uh, my husband puts them on the rack. This one in particular is great for opening uh, your lungs. It's called pranayama, which is the art of breath. Whatever you create with your hands is a direct expression of your heart, and I so wholeheartedly believe that for humanity and the whole earth. So that's what I want to be able to transmit to the public in general. Si se puede, do it. Amila's Taverna isn't just a restaurant, though it's some of the best Greek food you'll ever have. It's been a cornerstone of this now family-friendly neighborhood for more than 30 years. We are something traditional. We are something coming from an ancient people. We are history. Welcome to Amilos. We are in Amilos Taverna at 3319 Broadway in Astoria, Queens, New York. My family has made more recent efforts to sort of renovate the area, um, to create a new introduction here on Broadway, and that begot the thought of Amilos Taverna. My husband truly believed in the area due to the fact that he's been on Broadway for over 30 plus years. For two years. For, there we go. So it was really his idea to start a restaurant. So I said, let's do a twist, yet keep the authentic Greek flavors from Greece in our dishes. That we've done a fantastic job of keeping the very Greek traditional flavors in our cuisine, but giving them an atmosphere uh, and a presentation of the plates that has not yet been done before. Try to have the best dishes here, the best food, everything to be first. Hey guys, let's go check out what Chef Eddie's working on in the kitchen. Chef, what's up? Hi guys, I'm Chef Eddie. Welcome to Amilas. The secret is really the preparation of the octopus with what ingredients inside to get that flavor, and then we throw it on the grill and then we serve it on a bed of uh, fava puree with uh, pickled onions and extra large capers with a few secret ingredients in there that I'm not gonna, I'm not telling. <laughs> so we decided let's do a lamb burger, um, ground lamb, again with spices, perfectly cooked, whichever way you like it, medium, well done, whatever the case may be. But it actually is a favorite of many people because you can just have your beer, you can have your ouzo, you can have your wine. Anything goes with, uh, with the lamb burgers. That's it, Caliorexi. We would love to have you come visit, try our food. That family touch is what keeps bringing customers back. Family is what we're about. Family is what we cherish. So I think Amilos is a place to find yourself and to find your family. It's a place about discovery. I feel very proud for my family and myself when I started this business. Coming up, it's been called the best fried chicken in America. Seasoned perfectly, cooked perfectly. It's fantastic. You're watching Secretly Awesome. Welcome back to Secretly Awesome. What in the world is roasted chicken? This family owned restaurant has been roasting since 1953 and it might just be the best fried chicken in America. We're not your typical fast food restaurant. This is a family-owned business that has been around forever. It reminds me of the Brady Bunch, like I'm kind of locked in time. What you see is from 1974. It's seasoned perfectly. The food's always good, it's very consistent. Consistency is the key. I don't want to say that it's just good, because it's not just good, it's fantastic. It is custom made to order exactly what you want. All right, am I just going to keep eating? <laughs> Can I take your order? 
It originally opened in 1953 in Limerick. We opened a second location here in Collegeville in uh, 1965, and now have just this location. Tomorrow at 11.30. Well, I am Brandy Landis. Well, I am the owner, but I work hands-on every day. I grill cook every day, and ordering, repairs, it's a daily thing. Spex is actually my dad's nickname. I've asked him numerous times, and I've gotten as many different answers from him. People call me up from out of town. They say, why don't you meet me at Spex for lunch? And I change my day and come over and meet him. We don't have to describe it because they know about it. Thank you. So I've never been here before, and I've been eagerly awaiting to try this roasted chicken. So the first thing I get, I'm a salt person, is the salt right on my tongue. It's really crispy. It's so moist. Mm. I don't want to say that it's just good, because it's not just good, it's fantastic. I can't get over, it's so like I'm squeezing it and there's juice coming out of it. That's how moist it is. I'm just gonna go for it. That's the best chicken I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I've never, honest to God, had chicken like this in my life. It's marinated, we do it all in-house. It is coated with a very light flour-based coating and the coating actually has some seasoning in it also. It's ready to cook at that point. We offer one kind of chicken, and it's roasted chicken. Regular fried chicken is basically just deep fried. Ours is deep fried under pressure. So the chicken cooks from raw to completely cooked in about 10 minutes. Regular fried chicken takes upwards of 20 minutes to cook. Hot, it's crispy. It doesn't compare to any chain, anything that I've ever had in my life. Even down south when I've traveled, it's not even close. Everything's homemade fresh. It's not stamped out. It's not assembly line. It is custom made to order exactly what you want. It's seasoned perfectly. It's cooked perfectly. It's, it's good. I like to bite it because it's very crispy and hard. We're unique because we're not your typical fast food restaurant. There's people that come from an hour away to come here. They tell us. We just drove an hour to come get your chicken and everything in between. We have a lot of locals. A lot of people have been coming here for a lot of years and that's our basis of our business is family oriented and we treat them that way when they come in. I venture to guess exactly like it was when it opened. We had a fire here in 1973, which took out the back half of the building. We remodeled when we reopened in 1974. So what you see is from 1974. It's got a charm to it. I don't feel like it's been here so long that it's just, you know, outdated in a way that I think it's gross. It's not, it's wonderful. My biggest thing is don't fix it if it's not broke. Oh, that was an amazing meal. And the best thing about fried chicken is that I can take the rest of it home with me. And speckle too. Come on. Love stories that explore the positive side of life? Me too. Follow at Localish for more good news like this every day. And up next, we're taking selfies in a camera store that's 120 years old. People come in and they stop and they look around and they just go, wow. You're watching Secretly Awesome. Come on. Welcome back to Secretly Awesome. Did you know there used to be close to 11,000 retail camera stores in the U.S.? Now, just 206. This Chicago staple has found a way to weather the ups and downs for 120 years. I like seeing the world through lenses. To compose something in a lens, you're, you know, you're cropping the world and you're fitting it into this view and it help, helps to make sense of things. I'm the owner of Central Camera. Krampa started the business in 1899, had a very successful and wonderful business for many, many years. His name is Albert Flesch, and I decided to come into the camera business with the family. He got here in uh, 1891. He was 13 years old when he came by himself. Camera business has shrunk the last number of years. There used to be close to 11,000 retail camera stores in the United States. As of about last month, there's 206. Why did we survive? good service, teaching, making sure people feel comfortable with the product, come back as many times as you want. 
Very competitive pricing and a big selection. I hope we're here for many years to come. It's 120 years this year. Anybody could go online and buy a brand new digital camera, but you kind of get no guidance with that. You get no help with that. You get no knowledge that comes along with it. People come in and they stop and they look around and they just, wow, because the, you don't see places like this anymore. This is the old style of uh, retail. Yeah, there's stuff out and about here, but primarily, if you want something, you got to talk to somebody. You spend more time at your business, for most of us, than you do in your home. So these people, are we're all family, whether we want it or not. We ran out of room a long time ago. We're a long bowling alley, <laughs> but we don't have a lot of width. I've been working here for 25 years. It's beautiful. Working with the customers, uh, relating to them, setting a nice rapport, explaining to them about the facets of photography and the lighting techniques and everything. It's the most enjoyable thing I've ever done. What could be better spending the day talking with people about photography, cameras and lenses? Conchas are a traditional pan dulce, or Mexican sweetbread. And at this bakery in Brooklyn, customers have been calling them delicioso for more than 50 years. I've been coming to this bakery since I was a child. My seven-year-old daughter loves the pan de, de muerto. My favorite is the mini conchas. The adults come first and then the kids, and now that the kids are having kids, they're coming in here. My father, he used to bake all night long. In the morning, my grandmother, my mother, used to go to the village uh, plaza to sell the bread. There, he's well known as Don Paco. That, that's why the name of the bakery, Don Paco. Well, the bakery started in Chila de las Flores, Mexico, in Puebla, with my grandfather as a baker. My father started at the age of seven years old, working with my grandfather, Angel Lopez. Then my, my father emigrated to United States. Until 1991, we opened the bakery with uh, limited equipment, but with a lot of passion. Now we're going to make the concha. This is the concha. You see the, the, the shell? This red concha is coloring, but a little strawberry flavor, but very light. We have the, the chocolate concha. When we make um, sweet bread, Mexican sweet bread, we make different kind of uh, shapes. Like this one we call volcano. That one we call uh, mordida or bite. This one we call pitaya. Pitaya is a fruit, wild cactus. They have different colors, and this one represented the needles. So we got to swipe these conchas fresh out of the oven. They're still warm. Let's see how they taste. They're so good. But these are just so like soft and mushy, and it makes the whole experience just delightful. Yesterday, I was, uh, I came and he was like, he had a sad face and I was like, oh no, I came too late. He was like, yeah, you came too late. This is our routine. Every morning we come and get our iced coffee and bread. I get to know people, I get to know everybody, I get to know their kids, and they get to know me. So it's all family business. Like we told them, you are part of the family. Coming up. They've been in the candy business since 1898. We'll find out the secret of their sweet success next. No, there's no salt in saltwater taffy. You're watching Secretly Awesome. Welcome back to Secretly Awesome. Did you know there is no salt in saltwater taffy? Like none at all. I know, my mind is blown. Let's head to the Jersey Shore to find out what this third generation sweet shop does put in the taffy. We make a lot of saltwater taffy over the course of the year. Shrivers is on the boardwalk on 9th Street in Ocean City. We have the largest selection of saltwater taffy, candy, and other confections. Our most popular flavors are vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry followed by our fruit flavors. Chocolate banana? Sour cherry. I like the mints. I love the banana and coconut. My favorite thing to do is to make new flavors. I love bringing in new products to see what other people like. Shrivers has a long history on the Ocean City Boardwalk. 
We've been here since 1898. That's over 121 years. It was owned by the Shrivers, and it was purchased by my grandfather, Henry Glazer, in 1957. My grandfather and his four brothers brought saltwater taffy to Ocean City, New Jersey. Back then, there wasn't air conditioning, so it was important to bring products that would last in the heat. Saltwater taffy got its name in Atlantic City. Mr. Bradley, who was a taffy salesman, had a little stand on the beach one day the water came up and washed over it. A little girl asked if she could have some of his saltwater taffy. And no, there's no salt in saltwater taffy. Here we are, inside of where all the magic happens. Shriver Saltwater Taffy is the only place on the boardwalk where you can come in and you can watch our saltwater taffy being made. This is where we start our process. After it cooks and beats the ingredients, it gets dropped down into a vacuum where the moisture is taken out. From start to finish, it takes about two days to make saltwater taffy. If it's not cooled, then it's like molten lava. So we need to give it time to get to a certain temperature before we put it onto the cold tables. We're at the pulling stage now. It takes all of the air and adds it into the taffy, which creates a chewy product. Our saltwater taffy is always consistently soft. We keep our process very streamlined so that our product is delicious. Here we are at the final step. It's been colored, it's been flavored, and it's ready to be run, cut, and wrapped. This will turn into about 2,000 pieces. So believe it or not, there is a right and wrong way to open saltwater taffy, the right way. The wrong way to open a piece of saltwater taffy is by starting in the middle. Then you have a lot of work ahead of you. Shrivers is open all year round. We have a lot of our repeat customers that come back and tell us their stories. My mom used to work here when she was a teenager, spinning the taffy and boxing it. I've been coming here since I was born. We have children that are coming in for the first time. I love seeing their faces. And I'm bringing my son now. He lives in Pittsburgh, but he just loves to come to Ocean City and we always stop at Shrivers. Pretty good, right? And that's our show. I'm Roxy T. And don't forget to follow at Localish for more Secretly Awesome.